So we decided to adopt Nectar right before the pandemic hit. We were already in negotiations with you guys. Right. Um, we being people way above me at the university who actually have <laughs> money and power and whatever. Um, they were already in negotiations with you. And then the pandemic hit. And, you know, within a week or something, that contract was signed and we were yeah. in. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And it was amazing to see Nectar just actually blow up. Yeah. Like two or three times in that yeah. first two or three weeks of the yes. pandemic. Totally. Because so many people were using it. It was like tens of thousands. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like overnight. And everybody kept telling me, Nectar's no good. It keeps breaking. And I keep saying, <laughs> But that's because there's so many people on it that they actually don't have server capacity and they haven't gotten the money from UCSB yet. We just signed the contract. They need to buy servers. Give them a week, you know? And, <laughs> and then you, after that, you, it was like smooth sailing. Yeah, exactly. It was perfect. And people just got it. That was the best yeah. part is we gave it to them and there was no learning curve. They just got into it and did what they needed to do. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really amazing to see how people could get connected through that. And how many times we saw in um, faculty and TA and student surveys that Nectar actually was a thing that was important to their class. And it happened in, in you know, all the different ways that I just explained, but really as a connecting point for students who and, and instructors who were feeling so isolated at the time. And then, you know, even once we came back to campus, there's still what 14, 15,000 people on Nectar every day, every day on our campus, yeah. every day. So, so that's, that's pretty exciting because there's something happening there that could not have happened otherwise. And that didn't happen at other universities. This didn't. Right. 